Hi, uh, welcome. In my series on science, today we'll talk about Isaac Newton's theory of gravitation. So far, we have talked about Nicolaus Copernicus and Johannes Kepler and how they gave us laws regarding the motion of the planets. Copernicus gave us a heliocentric model in which the planets uh, went around the sun and Kepler gave us empirical laws regarding the motion of the planets. Kepler's laws look like this. His first law said that the planets go around the sun in an elliptical orbit and not circulus and not circular and uh, that the sun was at the focus of these at one of the focus of this ellipse Kepler's second law stated that planets speed up when they are closer to the sun and they slow down when they are farther from the sun however they speed up and slow down in such a fashion that the area sweeped by the planets is equal planets sweep out equal areas in equal time kepler's third law stated the following that the planets that are closer to the sun uh, revolve around the sun in a much lesser time as compared to the planets that are outer planets that are inner have a much shorter revolving time or orbital year as compared to the planet outer planet in fact he said that if the time it takes for a planet to go around the sun is t then t is proportional to distance d to the power 3 by 2. Now Kepler, even though he had given these laws, never uh, uh, gave us a machinery behind this. He never told us why these models, why these laws work. These laws were empirical in the sense that they matched the data well, but Kepler never told us why, for example, the planets sweep out equal area in equal time or why is the orbital period proportional to distance to the power 3 by 2. Newton took a great step forward and published a very elegant theory in his book Principia Mathematica in which he put together such a beautiful theory that it all made sense. In fact, all of Kepler's empirical laws can be derived using, using Newton's theory and that is what we are going to talk about today. Isaac Newton's work was very significant as it gave us the machinery behind the motion of the planets. Uh, it is also a very significant milestone in the human history of understanding science. It remarks, it, it basically starts an era where human beings realize that, oh, hmm, if I can understand the motion of the heavens, I can understand other phenomena too. And they let go of superstition and adopt science. They realize that the universe works in deterministic ways and that you can understand these laws and that you can improve your lives with that. Uh, so in today's lecture, we'll talk about the circumstances uh, surrounding the discovery of theory of gravitation. We'll meet uh, Galileo and uh, Newton. And we'll also try to understand the basic ideas behind uh, theory of gravitation. Uh, so let's talk about Kepler's laws. There are questions that immediately follow after you assume that Kepler's laws are correct. For example, one of the questions that pops up is that what keeps the planets moving? Why don't they eventually come to rest? Second, why are planets following these laws in the first place? Now Galileo was born in 1564 and he made huge advancements in many things. Uh, one of which was that he built a telescope and uh, looked at the moons of Jupiter. One of the things that he did was that during those days the the view of motion due to was what Aristotle had thought is that Aristotle believed that a moving object will not continue to move forever and that it will eventually slow down and come to rest unless a force acted on it that for for an object to continue in motion it was necessary to apply a force at all times but Galileo realized that this was a problem in light of Copernicus's discovery that the earth went around the sun because apparently there was nothing to apply the force on the earth on. I mean, why was, how come the earth did not stop? How come the earth was, was in eternal motion around the sun? One of the leading theories, believe it or not, was that there were angels who carried the earth and that they flew with the earth and they applied the necessary force so that the earth didn't stop and clearly this this is not a foolproof theory because uh, for one I cannot see or detect the presence of those angels Galileo had a very different idea and it's a beautiful idea he believed that a body that is moving on a level surface 
will co just continue in the same direction at a constant speed unless disturbed unless disturbed so his idea was that look things do not have to come to rest as their natural state if you don't disturb a moving object it will just continue to be in its state of motion however his law was slightly wrong in the sense that galileo considered horizontal motion to be anything that didn't bring that object closer to the center of the earth so according to him a ship on the surface of the ocean is is in a horizontal motion around the earth he argued that if you take a ship and you give it an initial impetus in a in a quiet sea it'll just continue to revolve around the earth and that was according to his law of inertia similarly he argued that the moon which was in a sphere is which was moving in a concentric sphere around the earth was will continue to do so because of his law of inertia now this concept was slightly wrong and newton eventually corrected it but galileo clearly did take a step forward in trying to understand the laws of motion another very beautiful experiment that galileo did was that he dropped a heavy object and a light object from the leaning tower of pisa and he demonstrated that both uh objects fall down at the same time the old idea due to aristotle was that uh heavier objects fell slower and he heavier objects fell faster than the lighter objects but galileo demonstrated that things fall independent of their masses what i find most surprising is that for 2000 years nobody bothered to check this aristotle's belief by an experiment now i can understand why aristotle might have thought of such a thing because if you drop a feather and a metal on the planet earth you it will seem that the feather falls much slower than the ball now that is not because feather falls slower that is not because heavier objects fall faster that is just because the atmosphere of the earth has air and uh, air hinders with the descent of the feather apollo 15 astronaut david scott he did this experiment on the moon and you know what he found he found that both objects a feather and a hammer fell down at the same time and we can look at the historic videos right now And you see how how amazing that is that the feather and the hammer fell down on the same time on the surface of the moon. So Galileo was indeed right. Let's talk about Einstein, uh, Isaac Newton. Newton was born in 1642, the same year Galileo died. He was he was born in England on Christmas Day. It was 25th of December, and he was born a very weak child. His mother uh, reported later that uh, he was so weak that he could have filled in a fitted in a liter mug. Uh, but he is perhaps the most uh, prolific scientist of his time and and the genius of his uh, parallel was not seen until einstein two centuries later uh, in he advanced various areas of mathematics and physics he for example in mathematics he touched he developed something called the method of fluxions which later became calculus in physics he demonstrated that the white light the light from the sun is composed of a spectrum of colors and and consider how beautiful that is that you can explain why we see rainbows in the in the sky uh however his greatest contribution i would argue is the laws of motion and the theory of gravitation now newton's laws of motion motion looks like this the first law is kind of an extension of galileo's laws of inertia it states that in an absence of an external force a moving object will continue to move with the same speed in the same direction notice how it is slightly different from galileo galileo considered a circular motion as horizontal as well newton did not 
agree with that he said that a body will continue to be in a straight motion with the same speed unless the force acts on it his second law states that if a force does act on a body the body will accelerate in the direction parallel to the force the acceleration will be directly proportional to the force applied and inversely proportional to the mass of the body so if a body is very very heavy then the acceleration that the body goes under will be smaller the theory of gravitation in this section we'll essentially discuss the basic insights that uh, Newton would have had when he was discovering the laws of gravitation so first thing he must have realized is that there is a force and we can argue about this in many ways first is Kepler's second law tells us that the planets speed up when they are closer to the Sun and they slow down when they are farther away so somehow the planets are feeling the presence of the Sun when the Sun is closer they sense it and they speed up how there there must be some way the Sun is is letting know letting the planet know that I am here and that is why we say that Sun is is uh, putting some force on the planet similarly according to the laws of motion of Newton uh, a body will continue to move in a straight line unless an external force acts on it a planet will continue to move in a straight line it will not go around the Sun unless a force acts on it so this is also an argument uh, that there is a force that exists between a sun and a planet. The second thing that Newton argued is that the force is radial. That is, this force acts on the planet on the line joining the planet and the star. And he was so smart that he, he even proved. And the reason he argued this is using Kepler's second law. He and, and we can prove this. I have given a link where you could read the proof that if the force is radial, then planets will sweep out equal areas in equal times you can prove it and the essential idea and that is also highlighted by this demonstration is that when planets move from point a1 to a3 you can prove that a1 equals a3 using geometry the second thing Newton realized is that the force weakens with distance the fact that the planets that are farther out in the solar system take longer to travel around the Sun it is simply due to the fact that they uh, they experience weaker force from the Sun and mathematically speaking from the fact that T square is proportional to DQ Kepler's third law Newton worked out that the force must, must exactly decay as inversely proportional to r square to distance square that is if you op take an object and you move it twice the distance from the sun the force that it will experience will be will decrease by a factor of four the force will be one fourth if you move it ten times apart that is the force will become one upon hundred and again i've given a link where you can read the proof the next thing that newton must have realized is that force is proportional to mass and this is easy to argue Consider the fact, if you drop a heavy object and a smaller object, they both accelerate down and drop to the earth and the acceleration is similar. This is demonstrated by Galileo's um, experiment that both heavy and objects fall down at the same time. If acceleration is same and force is mass times acceleration, force is clearly proportional to mass and that is what Newton argued. The next thing Newton realized and this I find the most beautiful is that he argued that this force must be symmetric see the Sun applies a gravitational force on the earth the earth applies a gravitational force on the moon the earth also applies gravitational force on the on us why would the earth leave out the Sun why would it be so partial to the Sun this is where Newton argued that everything is attracting everything the earth does apply a force on the Sun it just so happens that the Sun is so massive that its effect on uh, the effect of Earth's gravitational force on Sun is much less visible to the eye than it is visible on the moon because the moon is lighter uh, and that was beautiful to understand in fact if you think about it when for example I jump out on an airplane Newton argued that the amount of force that the earth applies on me the earth is attracting me come down come down come down 
I apply the same force on the earth. I am trying to attract the earth towards me. I apply the same force. I am much tinier as compared to the earth and therefore the the visible effect on me, my acceleration is much larger than that of the earth. Similar to the fact that the gravitational force experienced by a body is proportional to its mass, we can say that the gravitational force of the sun on the earth is proportional to earth's mass. Similar to that fact, we can say that the gravitational force of the earth on the sun has to be proportional to sun's mass, which means that the gravitational force between two bodies is proportional to the mass of body 1 as well as body 2. And combining these results we can see how Newton must have arrived at his universal law of gravitation. It states that all bodies that have mass exert gravitational force on each other. This force and this he proved using Kepler's second law acts along the line joining the center of the two bodies. If the two bodies have masses m1 and m2 and they are r distance apart, the gravitational force is given by m1 m2 is proportional to m1 m2 upon r square. And g here is the gravitational constant so that the force is g m1 m2 upon r square. Now a lot of people ask the following, if the gravitational force is attractive, if gravity is really true, why doesn't the moon fall? Why doesn't it simply fall towards the earth? Well the answer is the following, it does. The moon does fall towards the earth the only thing is it does not come any closer now you will ask how could it be that something falls down and yet never come closer to the earth well it is possible trust me here is how suppose you take a stone and you drop it vertically it will come from rest and it will drop 10 meters in its first second if what will happen if you throw that stone vertically if you throw that stone vertically it will travel horizontally but it will still drop in the first second 10 meters down. Do a thought experiment. What will happen if you continue to increase the horizontal speed of this stone? Well, it will it'll still drop 10 meters in the first second, but it will continue to travel farther and farther and farther. Now, realize that the earth is not infinitely big. The earth is, the surface of the earth curves too. And so if you throw a stone fast enough, what will happen is that in the first second when the, when the stone drops 10 meters, the surface of the earth will curve by 10 meters as well. In which case the stone will fall but it will now never come any closer. The stone will continue to fall towards the earth eternally yet it will never reach the earth. In fact we can try it out. Let's try it out. Suppose you have a cannon and you fire it with 2000 meters per second, it will come uh, it will fall on the earth. Next if I throw it with 4000 meters per second it will travel a little bit more distance. Now but it will still fall on the earth. Now consider what happens if I throw it with 4600 meters per second and this is something beautiful. It is falling, it is falling, it is falling, it is falling yet it is never coming closer to the earth. You know why? Because the surface of the earth curves and by the time it falls a distance, the uh, surface of the earth curves by the same amount and it never approaches the earth. The same is true for the moon. The moon eternally falls toward the earth, yet it never reaches it. And this is very similar to people aboard the International Space Station. They are continuously falling towards the earth. To conclude, what I would like to say is that the theory of gravitation answered many questions of the past. One of Aristotle's objection was that oh that earth if the earth is really rotating at a high speed if the earth is spinning on its axis why aren't we thrown off the surface of the earth and the answer is that that is due to gravity. Due to gravity the earth's surface keeps us hugged to the ground. Newton's theory of gravity d gives us the a proper understanding of why Kepler's laws work. It gives us the mathematical model behind Kepler's empirical laws. In fact, using theory of gravitation, you can mathematically derive Kepler's empirical laws. Theory of gravitation connects the motion of a, thro a stone thrown in the air with the motion of the moon in the orbit around the Earth. In fact, uh, another fact is that uh, theory of gravitation was used to discover Neptune. People looked at Uranus 
and uh, they found an anomaly in the way it was going around the sun and they couldn't explain it they thought they argued that probably there is some other planet which is exerting force on Uranus that we can't see yet and they looked up and uh, they found Neptune they predicted where it will be and there it was to my last slide is that the notion the idea that gravity exists that things fall down seems very natural to us because we were born on this planet but if let's say someone was born on international space station if they ever land on planet earth they would feel very awkward to them gravity will seem very unnatural it will be like earth is a giant magnet that is just sucking them down to the ground gravity is very real thank you